Today we're going to go over some of the transitions of the Turkish getup from the uh, initial position starting on the back up onto the elbow. There's a couple of different ways to do it, uh, some different leg positions we'll go over. It's a common question with a lot of our patients. Uh, there's a lot of different things out there and different manuals, internets, techniques taught. Uh, they each have their own little flavor to it depending on what muscle chain and what line we're using. So you know, nothing's right, nothing's wrong, it's all more what. Um, what muscular chain are we going for? What clinical aspect are we trying to have to, uh, respect towards as we come through? And uh, whether it's sort of like a temporary modification as someone's condition improves or it's something that we have to keep for the duration. So, when we have our traditional setup on our back and we come up, one of the first questions we get a lot of time is um, this lower leg, does this have to be straight or not? And at what angle going out to the side? Um, the first incidence I can really think is if someone has, has a recovering radicular issue and they still have some neural tension. That initial post up onto here on a fully straight leg is might not feel that great if they still have a positive straight leg raise or slump test. So that could um, alter a lot of the lumbar spine motion, cause some additional issues and kind of throw it off. So whenever that's more the case, I mean, I have no problem with keeping like a little more bend on this knee or putting into a slight little bit of external rotation as we go over top. A lot of this will actually help out with that initial crease over the hip especially if you have a little bit of hip pathology or some restricted motion there, a tight posterior capsule, where this just doesn't want to get over top, that little bit, bit of opening into the external as you go across is going to help that out. So one of the um, main things we're going to talk about today is the, uh, I figured that out way, was more the, as we come across, one of the big differences is going to be whether or not this leg is on the ground and how much we use it. So as I'm rolling over top, I can roll mostly through my midsection or I can recruit some extra help from my posterior functional line, uh, we'll go through that in anatomy trains in a second, to get a little better drive going across. So if I get like a little better, a little bigger stomp through this heel, and I keep a plant through this elbow as I come across the, the opposite sides, as I come through, I'll have a line from this lat connecting across my back through my opposite glute down into this heel as I come across to post up onto the elbow, as I have my anterior line of more my straight. So my pec going through my abdominals into the, in, into the downside hip as I go back and forth. So to get on the other side, you imagine the line connector from this heel to the glute, to the lat, onto the elbow. As I come up in the right post position, and I control back down. So depending on whether or not we have this leg on the ground to utilize that, we'll see if we have an extra grab over top. Uh, to give you a better visualization on that, going to go to some uh, little reference of anatomy trains. If you don't have it, good book. Get it. Has some interesting stuff. So this is the main visualization that we're going to go over. So on the back side, we have this opposite side glute to lat, kind of like crisscross going back and forth. So when we'd have one leg fixed on the ground, that's going to transfer up through into the opposite arm so we can work that function on a little bit. This would be balancing out with this, uh, with the anterior line, which would be more of our pec, um, going through more of our rectus into the opposite adductor. We're going to have a, some extra oblique and all that other kind of fun stuff into the serratus going on at the same time too by default, assuming your you know, spine stabilization system is functioning, which should be if you're doing a getup. Um, so kind of like as we're pushing with one X of this as the other one is contracting, a little like some um, co-contraction effect. So in order to do this, uh, this maneuver smoothly, we need to have a nice balance between the two. If you do not, if you have more of a stability motor control issue and not the mobility issues, that can be why you may have all the pieces and when you try and put it together, it's just an awkward, stiff, or kind of uh, erratic motion because you don't have the ability to sort of combine the opposite motions of the different chains to say, okay, this one push, this one push, this one elongate, this one elongate, and then everything plays well together. And um, just kind of like a happy little kingdom then. So, so we'd have our traditional one like that. Just to review that one more time. We keep this one on the ground as we come across. So we have this back side diagonal, this front side diagonal, working in harmony as we come across. So um, recently I've seen a little bit of one of the other variations that came out was a check get up from the Prague group, um, from the Prague, uh, uh, from the Prague school, which would be we're going to ditch the feet on the ground, and when we get up to kind of like our three month kind of initial position as we get into here, when we come across, we're not going to be able to use a, that that extra hip drive because we don't have a fixation point down there. Um, they'll still be doing a little bit of stuff back as a counterweight, whole other conversation with that. But here we're going to use our first and second uh, oblique chains. 
which would be the first one would be the hip coming to the downside shoulder, then the top side shoulder coming to the downside hip. So as we come across and we prop up, all of that's gonna come more from the midsection, getting the, getting the force transfer from the top side hip to the downside shoulder, from the top side um, shoulder to the downside hip. So as we come across, they get the prop onto the elbow each way. We've got a little different driver because you can't grab any extra push from that backside extensor group through the thracolumbar fashion. So, so as we go across each way, it's just a little different way to do it. So depending on whether we want to include a little bit of the extensor chain for more of our traditional one, which would then progress onto the hand and then up onto the high bridge, which happens to be one of my favorite things. Or if we're going to do more of the transitional onto here and then step across getting into more one of our tripod positions or onto quadruped. We have a whole series of those on the same channel too as far as the uh, as far as the different routes you can get from that. I, remember, I mean this is this kind of this oblique sitting diagonal sit, diagonal sit side bridge, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, this is, I mean I spend a lot of my day here. This is sort of a transition point to a lot of different spots and um, the rehabilitation or whether we're going to go do a um, quadruped stance onto all fours, however we're going to do it. We've got a, uh, a lot of different options from this. Um, so getting the ability to get in and out of this fluidly is really important for a lot of the exercise progressions. So getting probably being proficient in both is a good idea. Um, each one does something a little bit different. To give a little better view on the muscular chains for that last one, we're going to go back to the anatomy trains book. So here we have a little better visualization of the oblique chains as they go across. So it'd be like the top side hip to the downside shoulder, top side shoulder to the downside hip. So here we get a little more of an X going back and forth across, a little bit more through the serratus anterior as opposed to the lat. So as this is coming through, we get a little different pull each way as far as where we're going to generate the force to get the motion. So once again, this has been a couple variations of your Turkish get up and uh, our initial post onto the elbow. Uh, we can really change up that amount of knee flexion angle and the external rotation on the downside if we have some issues getting over top of that. Otherwise, it could throw a lot of the spinal fluidity coming up. Um, two different ways to do it using some different muscle chains. Um, using the uh, co contraction between the functional lines, um, which is one of the better examples would be from the Anatomy Trains textbook, is um, it's kind of a unique way to work into that from some different fixation points. Um, and the using the uh, first and second oblique chains through more of like the DNS prog school approach for that gives a little different effect too. So in a summary, each one has its own um, special ways to do it. Probably should be good at both. And um, yeah, please let view the rest of the channel. We've got some extra variations of how to break out, uh, break out, or either work up to or break out from there, especially that um, wonderful little oblique diagonal sit position, which we can uh, have a lot of options from.